All right, this is my care video for mole salamanders, blue spotted salamanders, spotted salamanders, tiger salamanders, I guess, on a larger scale. But basically all American salamanders that start from larvae, this will this basic setup will work for, I guess. Just be aware of diet and uh, temperature and things along those lines. But let's just jump right into it. Here we can see my larvae swimming around. I, I had this separate from every other setup that we're going to go over here, but uh, there aren't any captive breeders of this species at all within the United States that I'm aware of that ca actively sell blue spotted salamanders. This leaves collecting them up to you. There are no domesticated, look at the stamp. <laughs> there are no de domesticated populations anywhere other than private collections and zoos. This species is often sought after by herpetology enthusiasts and species collectors. The only thing is it's, it's protected in many states, so be aware that um, when collecting this, where, where you're at and if it's legal, uh, I collected them in upper Michigan on private property and in Michigan they're not, they're of least concern regardless. And I took uh, larvae out, out of a vernal pool where there were thousands and thousands of other larvae. So I don't feel too bad about withdrawing five of them from the population. But we're gonna start here with a bin. And the reason you're gonna wanna have this water dish be separated, you're gonna take like a space of like a, a tackle box or something along those lines. Uh, anything that's separated like that because you don't want to keep your blue spotted salamanders within close proximity of one another when they're in their larval state. This applies for all the mole salamanders. This same pond produces spotted salamanders. Their larvae looks almost identical. Uh, in 2018, I thought I was bringing home blue spotted salamander larvae and two of them were spotted salamander larvae and I didn't know until a year later because they're mole salamanders and I had them in a setup that had very deep substrate and I lost them for over a year and they just ate scraps and survived just fine and I didn't even notice that they were in there until I had to move setups when I moved into this new house. But in the beginning of this video series, uh, I'm in house one at my parents' house, but since then, since then I've moved out of my house and now I'm in an apartment, so I have all of these animals elsewhere, and you'll notice halfway through the video that the carpet will change and things like that, but this is going to be a multi-part series. Uh, the reason is, is there's too much content in each video to <laughs> possibly make this into one huge video you'd be here for two hours and I don't think many people are gonna digest all of that information in one sitting. Uh, you can see that that larvae looks smaller than the rest of them and that's for the, the reason you don't want to keep them together is because they're cannibalistic. They've ate the other one's tail off and then eventually ate that small larvae over time. You'll see later on here in the video but uh, there's a reason to keep them separated. While they're young if they are uh, not, they don't have a lot of readily available food they will attack one another. Uh, this species has a lot of interesting things about it. One, the blue the blue hue is beautiful. It looks very, um, I don't know, a lot of people like the blue spotting on the side. It can be very vibrant when they're speckled up heavily. Some of them are darker than others and can look similar to things like slimy salamanders, just a little thicker, but I would say that, the, the, I don't know what I'm trying to get at. The reason I like this species is because the way it looks, uh, the way it acts, it's very hardy. It also can hybridize with uh, other species of mole salamanders. It hybridizes with um, the Jefferson salamander to make the Tremblay's salamander, I believe. I'm not quite sure. I have a bunch of reliable links. Uh, I'll, I'll go over all of the, that sort of thing in another video, but this is m this video itself is more about taking care of from larvae to adult. So say you went out into the woods and you found a vernal pool and you put your hand down in it and for whatever fucking reason you stuck your hand in the mud and pulled out some salamander larvae. Uh, you bring them home and you have them in a bowl and you want to know what to do? You watch this video. <laughs> Basically what I'm doing here is I'm putting down a leaf that connects the water for, to the land side so that they have a place to climb out of the water when the time comes to metamorphosize. Um, at this point, I had two of them in this bottom containment unit here, and you can see that the one bullied the other one out, probably either because of food competition or because they, they were just not getting along. You could see that other salamander uh, took itself out of the water and then went out uh, underneath the 
water dish itself and was still even in its larval state but just went underneath the water bowl where there was more water and is fine you'll see that in a later clip here but they are you're, you're gonna want to keep them in a, a water dish like that where they are separated until they are large enough and well fed once you have them established you notice that they are feeding you're definitely going to want to do that I, I just held up a bottle of repti safe uh don't feed these pellets disregard this um, but that repti safe is in case you have I have well water at the house where I, I took this video so I could just use it right out of the sink But if you live in a city you might have chlorine or fluoride in your water So you're definitely gonna want to treat it and make sure it's of proper pH or just use the initial pond water where you collected them If you collected them from a pond you should probably just use that pond's water You'll also collect a lot of larvae and other um, Insects with that that they will feed upon but if not you can always go find a tree that has water in it and collect mosquito larvae Like I just did here in this clip um, there's so much I want to go over and this video is moving really quickly for me regardless of it being fucking 20 minutes long There's so much that I want to talk about so um, Forgive me if I'm going all over the place. There's just a lot of different Things to cover uh, basically I just I'm, I'm separating the tree water now from the larvae themselves being very careful not to pour the larvae out but pouring out most of that tree water as I can because it's not the same water as the salamanders are used to and it might be of a different pH or acidity or whatever the fuck that's going to cause some irritation in their very permeable skin. So you're going to want to ensure that you're using a lot the same kind of water as constantly as possible when when they're in the sensitive larval state you're not going to want to fuck with them or put them in tap water or something along those lines because you could severely harm your your larvae. They're delicate when they're in this state. Uh, I would never recommend anybody touch these salamanders while they're in their larval state that would be just fucking detarded that wouldn't be smart uh okay yeah like i said you can see how the uh larvae went out <laughs> from the square and went underneath uh and here you can see um i show in a minute here that um shit i don't know where this is going all right the Salamanders themselves, one of them crawled out of its square and then crawled back into another square and then ate a smaller larvae. So uh, I'm sure it'll show that here in a moment. Let's, um, so when feeding, it says worm warning. Don't feed salamanders or, or other critters worms that have been kept in captivity for more than a few days. There's evidence to suggest that worms are a wonderful feeding ground for toxic bacteria. bacteria. Even though worms still appear healthy, and maybe um, they may in fact become a living lethal brew of toxins. Uh, I learned this the hard way, feeding young snakes with captive worms always feed critters with freshly dug garden worms. Alright, that's something I just pulled from the internet. I have a lot of uh, just compiled information here that I wanted to read. Uh, in the background of this because you can obviously just kind of read my body language uh, what I'm doing to set up the uh, enclosure itself it's pretty basic just water on one side uh, sterile coconut fiber mulch on the other side you can buy in a bag at the pet store it's, um, I would recommend putting a very thin layer of the coconut fiber mulch if you want to see your salamanders because they are very uh, they're mole salamanders they, they they bury themselves they dig tunnels that's what they do I'm currently keeping these salamanders right now with marbled newts um, controversial hey how do you feel about that a lot of people fucking really hate when people mix animals but uh, if you do it right you know, they're, they're not gonna compete with one another if you're feeding them all well and you're not I don't know there's a there's ways to do it and it's an experiment right now but nobody seems to be harming anybody so they're all getting along very well uh, when placed together adult tiger salamanders will attempt to eat the blue spotted salamander something to keep in mind w uh, when trying to hybridize them, but you can still hybridize the blue spotted salamander with the tiger salamander interestingly enough You can do that with the slimy salamander the tiger salamander the uh, Spotted salamander the marbled salamander. There's quite a few of them and that's very interesting to me because over the next 20 years if I ever decide to expand my collection I could potentially uh do something a little bit unnatural in the grounds of captivity because I'm interested in that sort of thing and that, that's pretty controversial too. A lot of people don't necessarily um, lean towards intentionally breeding hybrid animals but I'm really interested in that sort of a thing and uh, there's a whole article that we can go over in a separate video. Like I said this is going to be a four or five part video playlist. Um, 
I think I'm just going to turn this into its an entire new series, just call it Evans Reptiles and throw it on the channel. I have an Instagram account called Evans Reptiles if you want to follow there for more frequent updates, but uh, we will compile the best better half of the content and put it here with commentary behind it and all sorts of other crap so if you are into that sort of a thing hit that subscribe button i guess i don't know here watch this feeding now uh these were fresh picked garden worms that i just took from the compost in my backyard and well look how aggressive these things are look at that like it does a little crocodile uh death roll or whatever you call that alligator death roll where they just grab on their prey and spin very intriguing uh he did manage to down that entire worm and it's really funny they look quite uh bloated after they feed on something this heavily i would uh, recommend feeding them mosquito larvae if you have an abundant if you have an abundance of them but if you only have earthworms just cut them into smaller pieces than this and uh put them in front of their faces and then they'll take them they take them as adults too on land and the marbled newts i keep them with feed on the earthworms too very readily and they don't seem to compete with one another honestly i found that since keeping these guys with the marbled newts they've become a lot more active during the daytime and i think that's a result of there being other salamanders or well technically f's right now they're just terrestrial newts right now but they're much more active during the day so i feel them seeing that activity from the other newts is making them a lot less afraid to just walk around their tank i found like these are not the type of animal to see during the daytime walking around their tank they will typically bury themselves or hide under something and they're not very active but i have found keeping them with other more active uh newts has or, or salamanders i don't know of any salamander species that are very active other than the tiger salamander i guess they're pretty ballsy but most of the salamanders are quite timid and i found these ones to be much more active while in the presence of other species uh, whether that's a result of competition uh stress moving them around or them or something like fish you see a bottom bottom feeders are more comfortable when there is a school of fish above them so my hypothesis or theory i don't know what you would call that is that maybe potentially these salamanders are seeing other life forms in their <laughs> shape like other salamanders basically terrestrial newts are salamanders uh moving around and i feel they're probably more they're comforted by this realizing that everything is okay and the the thing is is these were wild ca caught as larvae and collected and then they metamorphosized into adults and they tame up pretty well that way but they're still not captive breds so when put with a captive bred animal uh that's really sketch too because you don't want to risk uh infecting your captive bred newts or anything like that with these wild caught animals so definitely ensure you uh what what would the word for that be quarantine them for quite a long time before you decide to put them with any form of other creature because you know you don't know if they could be carrying something i don't think that blue spotted salamanders or salamander larvae carry many diseases but i am not the person to be spreading that information because i do not have the uh conclusive answer on that but in my experience putting blue spotted salamanders with all other animals um honestly it's not it hasn't harmed any of the other animals if anything just don't put them with frogs or something dumb that'll eat them anything that uh they could don't put them with any animals that they'd fit in that animal's mouth because the other animal, they look like fish bait, dude. Anything's gonna eat them. They look like worms. Look at the way they wiggle around. I don't know. But keeping them with, uh, I've kept them with a dumpy frog too, as well as adults for many years. And they're too large at that point to fit in the dumpy frog's mouth. And the dumpy frog, um, he hides himself like in the arboreal area of the tank to where the salamanders are mole salamanders. They bury themselves in the substrate. So if you have deep enough substrate, they'll just make a tunnel system and they won't come out until it's time to breed or feed, whatever the deal is. I see them actively randomly as adults in my larger tank every couple of weeks, but I don't see them often. If you want to see them often, you have to have a very thin substrate layer. And I have an entire tank setup video after this uh, for them as adults. And that will be next in the playlist, but Right now, we're just going to focus on taking care of them as babies. I removed the uh, the water bowl at this point because they were feeding readily and they were large enough to put in there be, and put be put together because they were already starting to metamorphosize to the point where they were they were going on to land at this point. So I wasn't really concerned with them harming one another, and they were all so large they wouldn't 
fit in each other's mouths. It's not like they were going to hurt each other. Here's my first metamorphosized blue spotted salamander. You can tell at this point it doesn't have many spots, but over time they speckled up quite nicely. And right now we're about two or three months after this video's clips recording right now that we're watching. And they've spotted up, they've grown in length, they've fattened up, they've been feeding well, they're living well with the marbled newts and there's no conflict that I've noticed at all. If anything, the newts are a little larger than the salamanders and could potentially eat the salamanders but haven't had interest in it because I put little worms in front of them like this and they seem very, very interested. Right now I don't think that um, this close to post metamorphosis it's going to uh, feed readily in front of me but since this clip has been taken they have fed in front of me plenty of times I think he was just a little camera shy during the recording of this video um, I haven't watched this in full so I definitely could have chopped this down a little further but I'm happy that I have this extra time to just talk about uh, these animals and my experience with them as a child see uh, where I live there are red-backed salamanders everywhere and they're, you don't see these guys often, but when you do, you see them like this as adults. You don't ever see them small like you see here in the bin. Uh, I just panned over to some adults that I've had and raised up for a really long time. But the thing is, is you, you almost never see them as adults like this because when they are that age, they're either in a rod and moist log and it's, or, or it's springtime and they're coming out to breed in a pond. But other than that, almost nine times out of 10, You'll find red-backed salamanders in habitat where you would assume to find salamanders, but you won't find these big guys right here. These guys are typically deeper in the dirt, in the leaf litter, in wherever. They're mole salamanders, and they're very inactive midsummer, but they seem to become more active in the spring and in the fall. When the temperatures get cooler, they become more active. When I was a kid, I had one that I kept in a 10-gallon tank, and it would always get out of that tank, and I would always find it on my basement floor. And uh, that sounds horrible, but for... Uh, <laughs> For being a salamander, it was extremely hardy. I was I was very surprised. Uh, if you're ever taking uh, leaves from outside, definitely um, rinse them off. I think I was just showing uh, how I had the adults set up temporarily for moving. Uh, this is another way you could house them terrestrially if you were going to keep them post metamorphosis. They don't need to necessarily be around a fuck ton of water like you saw in the setup before. That, uh, I currently house them in a vivarium that is 50% water, 50% land, but the amount of land that's in there is sufficient, and the reason I keep them in a setup like that is because I'm keeping them with newts. You can keep them in a much more terrestrial setup. You can keep them in a bin their entire life. You don't have to have them in an aquarium. They don't require any special light. They don't require any special diet. You can feed them worms, wax worms, slugs. I've heard they eat snails. I don't know how good of an idea that is, considering that's a hard-bodied animal, and digesting bone may be difficult, like shells. Uh, but I know they can eat crickets, they'll eat anything that's big enough to fit in their mouth and is moving and some people can get them to readily eat from, they can be hand trained, they can be tweezers trained and some people get them to readily eat pellets but those pellets have to be moistened or it has to be turned into some form of slop before it'll go into the uh, amphibian's mouth so easily. I've found that uh, 9 out of 10 amphibians take to movement when it comes to feeding and the other one out of the ten is hand trained but otherwise your animals are not going to eat something in front of them that isn't moving I see I find and a lot of times they can be shy and just because you don't see them eating in front of you doesn't mean that they're not eating you're just going to want to check their cage for excess food make sure it hasn't been left over and make sure that they look a little bit thicker over time just uh, if they're not eating in front of you don't worry they might just be a little bit shy but they, otherwise they seem to be pretty good eaters. My When I kept, kept the adults in this cylinder for a little while before moving them into the large vivarium that you'll see in a future video, they dug themselves tunnels inside of this little bin of coconut fiber mulch and then each of them had their own little tunnel and then I would just throw a wax worm at the end of the tunnel and it was really funny. They looked like uh, whack-a-moles almost. They would, they would just come out and they would eat the food and then they would go right back into their hole. It was really funny. Uh, if you've ever seen like an eel come out of a rock, it looked very similar to that as well. Uh, we're nearing the end of this video now. Most of the uh, salamanders have become terrestrial at this point. You can see that they're climbing their way out of the water and starting. some of them are even starting to gain their spots. Uh, in the next episode, I will go over the tank setup that I will briefly show you here, but it's much more grown in at this day and time. Uh, I, I show the skeleton of the tank in a clip upcoming here in a moment, but I don't necessarily um, show what the tank looks like right now. And in the next video, if you'd like, right here, if you'd like to see what this video, this 
tank looks like planted full of newts and salamanders and all sorts of greenery and lush lusciousness and wood and sand and it's fully filled in you can click to watch the next video but this is what I put the salamanders in I made a whole false background uh, I'm gonna add a misting system to this but there's all sorts of extra effort that went into that tank aside from what you just saw in this clip but here the salamanders are nearing the end of their aquatic phase and are almost all terrestrial at this point uh, here you can see they look a little bit blue there you can see quite a bit of spotting near the tail and um, I had five successful blue spotted salamanders come out of this uh, click to watch the next video if you'd like to continue there's so much information I didn't go over in this one and there's, there's so much more that I have to talk about and so many more projects after this that expanded in many more directions than this did this was just the beginning and welcome to Evans Reptiles <laughs>